<laughs> Greetings, Zeta Clan. How are you doing? Um, there seems to have been a huge shift that feels like a massive solar flare, but there are no massive slow solar flares at the moment. I know I'm not the only one feeling it. So quite heady, a bit spaced out. The shifting and um, there's something big gathering here. I'm gathering notes and I want to do a big Sedna reading because, oh my gosh, the energy is gorgeous to work with. So I'm dancing with Sedna and getting quite a lot of messages and it's starting to fuse now so that it's making a little bit more sense. But what I want to try and do, I sense with futility, is to just read into the Sag full moon that's coming up in two days. So May the 23rd, we have a full moon in Sagittarius, Western full moon in Scorpio, Sidereal. And the reason that Sedna's coming in is because opposite those points is Gemini and Sedna has just moved into Gemini. And for me, is bringing the big messages, uh, the big vision of the next phase of shifting that we're moving into. So let's just see if we can speak to the Sag, Scorp, full moon. And if you remember, so it's happening at two degrees of Sag. Um, I'm just going to read into Western. Conjunct Venus, Jupiter, loosely conjunct Uranus. So the sun is going to shine and reveal uh, Venus, the house of love, Jupiter, the house of expansion, Uranus, the house of genius. And so you and a lovely sextile to Neptune. So there's going to be this kind of dreamy, foggy energy, uh, trine Pluto. These are all lovely uh, alignments. Um Anything else? No. So I want to keep it light on the astrology. I can get quite buried in astrology. So we're going to use the Black Moon astrology. That is a very good question. Where is Lilith is Virgo? 25 of Virgo. <laughs> I might not be able to unstitch this from the big Sedna messages. So if I speak to mystery and that beautiful 12 of personal authority, and becoming unafraid to be seen in all of your light and all of your shade, whatever light and shade means to you. So a big reveal, it feels like a big reveal, but it's full moon, so it's the closing of a cycle. So if you go back six months, I can give you the date. The last new moon in Sag was December the 12th, 2023. So look for the big themes in that last six months, because that's going to be wrapping up and closing. And the next card out is the third house of messages. Yeah, that reminds me. A couple of three videos ago, I spoke about Taurus as the fourth house of roots and foundation. Um, and Taurus is the second house of personal resource, but that's the energy that was coming through. And uh it's sat crooked with me ever since. I just want to speak that through, that sometimes deliberate mistakes come through. They happen all the time in numerology because something hidden, thank you, <laughs> because something hidden wants to be expressed and so it might come through in a mistake. So third house, Gemini communication, 27.9. 
to even that 27.9 is linking <laughs> to Sedna. I can't do the Sedna reading now because it might be a long one and I've got clients coming in. Uh, And with this third house messages, yes, definitely. Sunken junk Uranus is going to bring through tons of inner revelation if you're doing your inner work. And in the house of Gemini, it might give you the either or, which might ping you into trust, distrust. Which way do I go? And there's a card that says no wrong path. And so here we birth the adventurer and explorer and child. <laughs> no wrong path okay and the underlying I can't make this up this is so beautiful yeah this is I'm just going to speak this through and look in the words of my beautiful friend uh, Steph Sigorsky from I Scry with Steph Take what inspires or irritates, okay? Because um, these messages don't land with everybody. So that sensitive soul is giving me something about the end of... Uh, it's not the end, because it's neither the beginning or the end. Challenges to superficial relationships, Okay. Eleventh house of Aquarius. You see the alignment. Can you see the alignment here? Aquarius, Uranus. Want to align us to our truth. A truthful expression with those around us is a learning curve and invites us to birth a new way of communicating. I'm just guided to that deck. A new way of communicating, which is more, yes, thank you. And I'm being reminded, Kathy, one of our subscribers, Kathy, you left a comment that totally lit my candle. <laughs> thank you. It's the simplest sentence. But Kathy, you said, I feel like my 3D world is dissolving. That, that, I used to do it this way and it used to work, or I used to believe it used to work. <laughs> but here's the question, how is that working for you? And can we keep using the old ways to communicate in new ways? Or are we going to walk out on that wobbly branch and risk the fall? And the fall may be from pride and ego and vanity and, and needing to be defined by something outside of ourselves. All of this is in the mix at the moment. Wow, I could end it there. That's such a beautiful message. So, so that's the challenge from this Sag full moon is to just wrap it up. And Sagittarius in itself is the visionary, is seer, the, the seer of the big vision. And there is the space in your relationships to bring through that big vision, to be a bit weird, uh, to be a bit abstract, to not make sense and for that to be okay. You know, this is all Uranus. And to know that there's no wrong path and nothing is wasted. You might have said something to somebody 10 years ago that you think is a throwaway statement, but it will have landed. And in there is a beautiful message to consider all the people's lives that you touch and how you touch them. And then how that secondary touch moves forward and everything is it builds a web. Every little touch from human to human builds this web. It's really beautiful. So speaking to the, um, the unity, the unification, it's not, it's the wrong word. It's like the echo. So what about some hints on what to wrap up? Can we be that cheeky? What's this one? <clears throat> okay. Reverse dissociation. First question, Disoci disassociation from what?
28101 feels fast on this. It feels like the light coming straight into form. It's fast, feels quick. And so what is the reverse of disassociation? Well, it's association. It might be integration, might be unity. Unity of hidden self. Unity of mystery self with the gross physical. I'm not saying you're gross. It's a term for the physical. Integration, so a reintegration. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, break addiction. Okay, Chrissy. <laughs> Identify the addiction first. And then build a relationship with it to find out what's at the root of it. Because we might even lean into our addictive personality to avoid birthing this new message that wants to come out of us, this new song. Or to open our wings. Yeah, and Sagittarius is reminding me now that it's the ninth house which wants to dissolve the experience and turn it into wisdom through the integration of the learned experience. Yeah, they've gone quiet now. Yeah, absolutely. In this space, with an open heart, is, is where we meet ourselves at soul level. It is divine union. That is the divine union. Like the deepest craving that I work with clients with is the craving to come home to soul. It's the most beautiful piece of work. There's a wave of energy coming in here. Thank you. I just quietly was asking about the significance of this. Yeah. Sometimes when I hear people talk about love, I wonder where is the love? I wonder where is the felt love and where they feel love. And this again is leaning straight into <laughs> Fedna's message. I'm just going to separate that out because I genuinely don't have time. Um, okay, so there's the key. The key is to trust the body um, and trust the resonances in the body. Because if we talk about love and we're not actually feeling anything, can we question that? And then dare we step into the vulnerability of actually what can I feel? Can I feel your love? Can I feel your love? Can I feel my love? So in conjunct Jupiter is going to expand that call to take that step. What would that look like for you? 
as a step, what would that look like? Well, Chrissy, if I step into my vulnerability, it's going to look like this, going to feel like this. Just feel into that. That's gorgeous. And a couple of cards from the uh, Astro something deck. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm useless. Yes. <sighs> oh, damn sure. <laughs> I thought April was big for astrology, but I may have got that wrong because May feels huge. Um, and check where your mind goes to with change. Um, do we make any assumptions in that? Because sometimes change feels like crap. Okay, it's okay to call it what it is. And sometimes change is fantastic and wondrous. Juno is somewhere in the astrology as well. I've read about it. I'm promptly forgotten it. Glad to be of service. <laughs> Partnership and how we relate to others. Review is the same message. Look, it's the same message of beautiful. Am I lying to you? That's a beautiful question. Thank you. Am I lying to you? Am I giving you a dark ages response? <laughs> or can I bring something new that might jar you, that might jar me? To, to just shift, you know. So it's it's communication. It's it's quite ground level. Community, yeah. It's quite ground level. Community. It's literally communication. Okay, I'm being taken back to such ninth house, the expansiveness, and the galactic center sits within Sag, twenty seven degrees, I believe. Ah, so what I can see, so quite visual, so I arrange things in lines because it's easier for me to understand than disparate cobwebs. Cultivate, it's, it's like going within to find that ninth house, going within to find your galactic opening, connection point and to communicate that to change the conversation or to elevate the conversation or create an inspiring conversation with no outcome or attachment expectation cultivate sensitivity cultivate vulnerability there's some beautiful daring energy here yeah, beautiful. Aquarius, again. Collaboration. Intuition. It's beautiful. Aquarius, mind, air, water, emotions. It's always represented with the washing, the purification of the emotions, which is a beautiful paradox. It's just my opinion. I find it a paradox that Aquarius, that is the high-minded thinker, the higher mind, that Uranian mind, is purifying the waters, waters of the intuition, waters of the emotion. I find that a beautiful marriage. And when we uplift and heal the emotional body, our ability to flow increases exponentially. And when we cultivate our own vulnerability, that makes courage. Stepping into the 
cultivation of vulnerability will breed courage within personal resource, self-reliance. That's gorgeous. Thank you. Oh. Go for it. Expand, grow, open your wings. Okay, let's have a cheeky abundance card and then I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to get myself a cup of tea because I haven't even got a cup of tea. This deck is so cheeky. I love it. Intuition. Love. Because <laughs> you're worth it. You've been worth it since the day you were born. Limitlessness. Goodness, goodness. Look at this. <laughs> And then here's the line, straight from Sagittarius, straight from the galactic center, down into the earth. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Yeah. It's... <laughs> oh, don't throw me into a big message at the end of a reading. Grief and sacrifice. And this is just, you know, that. To birth the new, sometimes we've got to sacrifice the old. Sometimes it's just a shift and a transition. But sometimes it is a letting go of a narrative that has kept you safe. You know, we're in this leaving home energy. Home, the, the, what's the word? Concept. Home, the concept of stability and safety. Reminding yourself that, you're spinning on a ball of rock through space, held down only by gravity. So how stable and safe can it be, really? So it might be the sacrifice of pleasing. It might be that, the sacrifice of pleasing. Um, the grief. Grief speaks to something a bit bigger. If we've been hiding grief, that's in the eruption now. This is, this is Sedna. This is in the eruption. Um, and I'll speak more to that later. And it couldn't get any better. Divine abundance. The energies that are going to be coming through. I haven't done the galactic um, astrology. It's too much for me at the moment. Uh, flow state is all I can really manage. But this is just... This is just beautiful. Intuition, love, worth, limitless, divine source, divine flow, grounded, divine abundance. That's it. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to welcome new subs. It's great to see you. Um, you are daring me to go live because I'm going to touch a thousand. I don't need a thousand, but I'm not going to put pressure on myself. And it might be a while before I go live. Um, it's all a bit locked at the moment. <laughs> So I love that you're here. Thank you for the conversations. Your comments are just beautiful. Um, take care. See you soon. Bye.